Welcome to Sporadic Phantoms. My name is Robin. And I'm Stevie. This investigation is taking us places. We just hope it leads us to the right ones. In our last episode, we analyzed video from the Green Wildlife Rehabilitation Clinic. 6.48 p.m. Here we go, here we go. Who's that? They're coming in in the dark, and the lights are... And a what? But the camera mostly caught some kids making TikTok videos. Not exactly share the truth material. Five, six, seven, eight. Left snap, body roll, right hip, point, and arm, arm down. Oh my god, I'm not doing this right. Can we go back? Still, it showed us that the clinic's security was lacking with no guarantee their cameras weren't being hacked. We have no solid reason at this point to suspect the Greens, but unfortunately, we've discovered some enormous security loopholes at their clinic. They only have one camera. We hope to get back there soon. Now that we know about the flaws in the clinic's security system, we think we can help protect it from Share the Truth. Look, I think it's pretty clear what we need to do. We can see if the sharing would be able to help reinforce the clinic's security system. Oh, okay. I like your thinking. But something came up in the local news. Peter Sanders, a 42-year-old computer engineer, and his 15-year-old son, Marco Sanders, were killed in the living room of their suburban home in the San Pisco area of Santa Barbara yesterday afternoon. The news made it pretty clear that this was being taken care of by the police. Local police still have no clues or leads, but an investigation is underway. But there was something there that everyone was ignoring that we needed to dig up. Sanders was familiar with Matcom, and that means that he could have been murdered, very probably for what he knew. You must know that you're in proximity of something that could be highly dangerous. So we met with Richard Dolan, who found more information about the incident. His coworker mentioned that Sanders' first wife had died in a boating accident, of all things. I looked into Sanders' ex-wife via other methods. Ah, here it is. <gasps> no comment. Well, aren't you going to say something? Turn off the recorder, Robin. No. Then I can't do this. Stevie. Stevie returned with Hedrick Chapman, and we discussed what Dolan had unearthed. A surprising connection between the victims and a former member of the sharing. And this connection is? Sanders was married to to Eva. She was in the mix. She knows who they are. New. Then, Hedrick proceeded to totally hijack this lead from us. We'll be dealing with this particular lead internally from here on out. Internally? You wouldn't want to mistakenly misrepresent the sharing again, would you? Only because it's getting too dangerous. It's all for the best that he stepped in. Okay, but where does that leave us now? We could have handled it, you know. At least I know I could have. You doubted me, Stevie. Dolan did too at first. We all know now, of course, that I hit on something major. Which was based on... Based on instinct. Logic. You told me to use logic, remember? Sure, they say it was all speculation, but look at them now. They're looking into it. It's just unfortunate that you felt the need to bring Hedrick in at all because we could have handled it. I feel a little undermined. If I didn't let him know what was up, I don't think you'd be gloating so much right now. It was because of me informing Hedrick that now the sharing is helping us actually substantiate all this stuff surrounding that story. We needed them. And, you know... Part of the reason Hedrick advised us to keep that part of the investigation behind the scenes is due to the potentially sensitive nature of the information. (laughs) Advised. Luckily, I had the hindsight to know we needed to deal with that information very carefully. Before you went too far with it. So this is a good thing, Robin. Come on. Even you're okay with how things turned out. (laughs) Admit it. It is good in some ways. They're putting more resources into 
forensic stuff. Maybe it'll eventually lead to them finding Share the Truth. And that's an exciting prospect. I know you must be excited about that. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but after all we've done, all the way up to this point, they don't trust us to be able to handle it when we get some serious information. And we've had our own issues with trust in the past, Stevie. Like in last season. But we're beyond that. We need to trust each other. But you didn't trust me. Not fully, anyway. Robin, we're in this together. We don't have a choice. Part of working as a team means we need to check each other. Checks and balances. It's not a matter of trust. And listen, they do trust us. Our listeners trust us too. It's why Sporadic Phantoms is still going strong. But this is all about information that might have led to us solving this once and for all. So, you feel like they're taking the credit from us? Well, kind of. Only because of how it turned out though, right? I mean, you recruited Dolan. Because if things did get out of hand, you thought he could take the fall for it, right? Stevie, you were also fine with getting Dolan. But things turned out positively because I got Hedrick involved. And he understood what needed to be done with the findings. And because they're taking it seriously, they're getting Dolan to help them directly. Which you didn't expect to happen, did you? You wanted that to be you. But you can't pick and choose. Like, you get the credit only if things go well. He gets the credit only if they go badly. It doesn't work that way, Robin. So, do you want to... Find Share the Truth, or do you want to just be known for finding Share the Truth? Like you said, we're in this together. This isn't about me or any one individual. Huh. So you're not just in this for, like, a promotion or anything, are you? Are you? This is bigger than that. This is about our community. We agree on that much. Right. Well, in time, you'll come to see that letting them handle it under wraps was the best move we could make. Have a little faith. We'll wait and see what happens. And anyway, it frees us up to investigate other leads. The clinic, for one. So we can go back now? Except we're still waiting on the okay for further resources to help them out. The sharing knows we started to investigate that place and they know it could be a hot spot for Share the Truth because of all the animals there. And they know about the lack of proper security. They have a lot on their plate though. Uh, the upcoming community health days are a big endeavor for one. Lots to organize. Remember, they're balancing helping out with the investigation with helping out the community in other ways too. Of course. But once I get the go ahead, we head to the clinic again and do our thing. Okay, so this episode can't exactly be the proximity part three, then. Maybe not. Okay. Uh, so, I have actually been thinking of something else we can do. It has to do with one of our older leads. Like, a particularly old one. Oh. Well, I have an idea, too. Something interesting has come up. But we can get to your old lead after, because this may be time-sensitive. Okay, then you go first. Okay, have you listened to any of our more recent voicemails? I've been a little busy with sharing stuff this month and looking into something. Well, there were a couple that came in recently that I found pretty interesting. Tell me what you think of these. Uh, hi, so um, I am really worried about Kyle, and I believe that you guys are too, so I, I gotta tell you this. I saw him. He was in Chicago. I, I was riding the blue line, and I saw him. He got on after me with this other guy, uh, this tall white guy in like camel pattern hunting gear, and they sat next to each other, so I'm pretty sure they were together, and Kyle just he kept looking at him. He kept giving him this nervous look, like he was scared of him. 
so that's that's why I I decided I had to tell you guys because I think he might be in some real trouble. I just hope that this is helpful to you. Hi, my name is Gary. I live in uh, Cicero, Illinois. I uh, got asked the other day from my vacation, and I saw Kyle or somebody that I thought looked like him when I was heading through the airport coming out of O'Hare. And uh, I don't know if he was coming, going, or what, but um sure looked like him based on the pictures that I saw. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Huh. That's two different people calling about how they saw Kyle in Chicago. We've never gotten this kind of response from our hotline before. Why would Kyle be in Chicago? Well, this doesn't tell us that he's definitely still in Chicago. The calls were a day apart. The person who said they saw him on the train called first, and the person who said they saw him at O'Hare called the day after. It sounds like he might have been passing through Chicago. If it was him. And if he was with someone, he's not just trying to escape all the share the truth action happening in Santa Barbara. It would probably mean share the truth brought him there. Why would share the truth take him there? Oh, Stevie, could they be targeting the new sharing center being built out there? That's what I was thinking, too. It's the only reason I'd imagine share the truth would be there. But do you think it could be a trap? I'm of two minds about it. On one hand, the fact that one caller said Kyle was with some military-looking guy in camo on the train, well, would someone from Share the Truth risk being seen with Kyle in a public place where they'd be recorded by security cameras? I might understand it a little more if it was just Kyle spotted out there. But is that really how someone from Share the Truth would get around? And is that even what someone from Share the Truth would look like? Share the truth can look like anyone. True. So, if it is a trap, it would be a trap to lure us to the Chicago Sharing Center. So, maybe they wanted to be spotted. But it's almost too vague to be a trap. It's more likely to be a red herring. Or it's legit. Or it's legit. Anyway, I say we alert the sharing members out there about this. And we file an aviation public records request to get CCTV footage from the airport from when Kyle could have been seen there. You can just do that? Oh yeah, you can. Good. And we'll also go there and investigate. Go? To Chicago? I was thinking more like having a Zoom call. Stevie, if Share the Truth is starting to target other sharing centers around the country, they could be growing their numbers. This could escalate. We could dismiss it, but why take the risk? And we can't really take any action here until we get approval for more resources for the clinic. So let's just go to Chicago. We talk to sharing members at the center there, see if they've been noticing anything suspicious lately, or even if they've seen Kyle around. And we check out their center, and we expand our field of play. Keep in mind, if it's a red herring, it could be an attempt to lure us away from something about to happen here in Santa Barbara. We can get there quick. Really quick. It would just be a day or two, assuming we won't get embroiled in anything too complicated over there. And we can head back at any time. And I'm sure we can get the sharing to sponsor our travel this time. Right. As long as we're smart about it. You're right. We might regret it if we don't follow up on this. You know, we make a great team. Do we? I put in the request for surveillance footage from the O'Hare TSA security check and from the Chicago Blue Line from around the times we received those voicemails. We alerted the Chicago police about a missing person potentially being spotted in the area. I also got in touch with a sharing representative and arranged an in-person meeting to see if anything of note was going on at the sharing of Chicago. It was unsettling to think the investigation was calling for us to go to a whole different part of the country when all share the truth activity so far has been centered in Santa Barbara. That meant the implications of our little trip could be serious. If share the truth was expanding their ranks and targeting more locations, we were going to have more problems to worry about.
We took a red eye from LAX to O'Hare. From there, we made our way downtown to our destination at the new sharing center, which was very central, right in the loop. <sighs> I didn't know it was going to be this cold. Maybe we should go back. Um, didn't you think it was super important to come here in person? I'm kidding. But it is cold. Not my cup of tea, either. But this is kind of exciting, getting to see another sharing center and how they operate. I hear they're not 100% operational yet. Is it still under construction? Well, they aren't constructing a whole new building in a dense area like this. But of course they must still be making some renovations to whatever building they're in. I guess we'll get to see them. Sporadic Phantoms will continue after these messages. The rich history of the Pacific Coast. The innovative, yet terribly flawed, technology of seafaring peoples. The seafaring peoples themselves. History comes alive at the Nartec Maritime Museum. Our dedication to intercultural exchange has led the Nartec Maritime Museum to feature what National Geographic has hailed as the most finely preserved maritime specimens in the United States, which includes boats and more. Witness our vast collection of seafaring vessels, including 18th century Mediterranean galleys, recreational ocean liners, vintage submarines, and even an entirely preserved and intact Japanese World War II aircraft carrier. And whatever else is sunken around here. And whatever else we've just taken. Climb aboard and experience interactive and immersive exhibits that challenge the very notion of ethical preservation. Gawk at the remnants of the people whose primitive technology we look down upon, yet we've nonetheless stolen. That's the legacy of the Nartec. Cultures preserved. History preserved. People preserved. Immortalized. Embalmed. Dried. Cured. Desiccated. To serve their highest purpose forever in our storehouses of knowledge. I mean, this is a museum after all. Visit the Nartec Maritime Museum. Have an experience of a lifetime and then never bring it up again. We entered the lobby of a high-rise building where the concierge directed us to the fifth floor. The elevator opened out to an open concept type of space with high ceilings and large windows. Couches and beanbags were grouped in clusters that invited gatherings and discussion. A counter appeared to house a fresh juice bar. There were reading nooks, pool tables, and computer stations. Beyond the main open space, there were doors leading to additional rooms. No doubt for hosting various classes, workshops, film screenings, etc. Much like Santa Barbara's center. The sharing of Chicago seemed to occupy the entirety of the fifth floor and felt like a spacious and inviting refuge. There was just one small thing. Does this place seem oddly kind of empty? Well, it's still new. Hello, welcome to the Sherry. Oh, is this who you were talking with? Very possibly. Let's see. We're representatives from the Santa Barbara HQ. We have a meeting arranged today with one of your leaders. We've been expecting you. May the Kendra- But before we continue, you should know that we produce an investigatory podcast to inform the public about the dangers of the guerrilla fighters that have plagued us in Santa Barbara for so long now. The group that is publicly known as Share the Truth. So we're recording this conversation and will most likely air it. Publicly. Interesting. Noted. I was communicating with someone here about discussing the possible presence of some or all of Share the Truth in the Chicago area. Is Brittany available? Uh, that would be me. Uh, yes, you're right on time. Follow me. Let's go sit somewhere more comfortable. Oh. 
We were led to what I thought would be an office, but turned out to be more like a therapy room. A small room with no desk, but cushioned seating, plants, candles, and a low table with a decorative zen waterfall on it. We made ourselves comfortable, which wasn't too difficult to do. I like the vibe you have going on at your center, Brittany. Thank you. We're working on growing our foundational member base and want the center to be the most inviting community space possible. A peaceful sanctuary. Um, how often does that train pass by the window? <sighs> About once every five minutes. Ah. So, you say this rogue group of van... Tagonists has been spotted in the Chicago area. Well, not exactly. There have been multiple reports of sightings of a person of interest who we know to be connected with the Share the Truth antagonists. Kyle Stevenson. This is him. So this person is a member of this Share the Truth, then? No. Then he's a member of the Sharing? One of the defectors? Well, he's actually just kind of a normal guy who we know is with Share the Truth now. Oh. The point is, he was apparently sighted in the Chicago area with someone else who has most likely shared the truth. Uh, we're kind of experts on the Share the Truth threat. You don't deal with them normally, so you may not be briefed on them and how they operate. They'd target your most vulnerable point, that being where the center is still under construction, and lacking normal security, and therefore vulnerable, your basement. Ah. They could have already infiltrated your lower levels. Well... But perhaps you can escort us down to your storage facility or pool, and we can investigate for any signs of Share the Truth. Yeah, about that. We don't have a basement level. How long have you been renovating? Construction is... At a halt. Or, well, it hasn't started. Are you saying you don't have a pool at all? No, we don't. Any lower level, no. Are you going to build a pool? Uh, TBD on that. Don't tell me you're planning on using portable jacuzzis forever. But every sharing center needs a pool. A and a gym. We know an old building like this would need any pool to be built on a lower level, right? Right. If we want to build an Olympic-sized pool, we'd have no choice but to dig down. We know we need to build one. It's been more difficult to retain members without the draw of a pool. People love swimming. So why has there been no progress? Oh, there's been progress with things generally. We have a storage facility, off-site, near the- Near- Stevenson was- Yeah, we're bleeping that out. And we do use a helipad on the roof, in case Mr. Stinton or other guests of note need to visit. We noticed the helipad earlier, on Google Maps, that is. As for the pool, though, well, let me explain. You see that train out there? How could we miss it? The reason we don't have a pool yet has a lot to do with that thing. As I'm sure you know, most of the L runs above ground around the city. The reason for that is originally, when it was built back in the 1800s by Charles Yerkes, <laughs> it was far too expensive to build underground, and they thought the ground was too swampy to even support a subway system. Chicago is built on a dry lake bed of soft clay. As soon as you dig part of a tunnel, you need to prop it open with concrete or it will collapse in on itself. Fascinating. So it's true that any kind of underground construction here would be considerably more expensive and time-consuming than in other cities. But here's what makes it nearly impossible. Consider the fact that underneath our feet lies the very small portion of Chicago's trains that do run underground, and a system of pedestrian tunnels, and old coal tunnels. That means there's very old underground infrastructure right here that is very difficult to get around. 
even for a city that's usually reluctant to build things underground. But for some reason, those in charge of establishing the center realized all these things only after we had already secured this property. Do you understand how much effort it would take to construct anything below a building in the middle of downtown Chicago and to win over enough city officials to allow the project to run smoothly? It's a financial, zoning, logistical nightmare. And it'd take a long time and make a lot of noise and people would notice. Why did you found your center here then? We want the sharing of Chicago to be extremely central. Some of us think it's still worth it to try to do whatever it takes to get a pool built here. But can I let you in on my idea? Sure. What is it? Personally, I think we should focus on a plan B. Build an annex center on the outskirts of town. You know, a recreation center with a pool, and tennis courts and everything. And it would be okay if it wasn't perfectly central, because it might be more doable to persuade officials to extend a small portion of a train line to lead directly to our annex location and allow it to run express for the convenience of the community. Dealing with infrastructure has been a problem with any sharing center popping up in a metropolitan area. I mean, why do you think New York's new center is out on Long Island? I'm glad out in California we don't have to worry about these things. Santa Barbara doesn't have a subway system. So, not so much older underground infrastructure there. Exactly. From what we know, the sharing HQ didn't really run into any zoning problems. Just a suggestion. Have you ever considered lobbying for a subway system in Santa Barbara? Does Santa Barbara need a subway system? It's pretty bikeable. Well, if I lived there, I'd want there to be one. The sharing has become somewhat of a local landmark, right? It's growing more every day. Then just imagine it having its own underground transit station, connecting all of Santa Barbara. Hmm. All I'm saying is, think about it. I bet you can make it happen if you wanted. You can be your own Yerkes. Wait, what are we doing here? We're getting way off topic. We came here to talk about Share the Truth? I'm afraid I haven't seen any sign of them. No animal tax, nothing like you've been experiencing. Best I can do is alert our members. I don't think we pose enough of a target for Share the Truth to come all the way here to attack us. You know, this all might be kind of a lot to put in the podcast. We might have to edit some of that, you know, for length. And we don't want Share the Truth to overhear so much about their plans. We can keep most of it in, it's fine. Quite frankly, I'm pretty confident that Share the Truth will be apprehended well before they can even think of interfering with the sharing's future mass transit plans here. We'd still like to investigate what we can. How's your security otherwise? State of the art. Every point of egress has a biofilter. Metal detector? Metal detector. The concierge is also an excellent watchman. And your off-site storage facility? It's monitored at all times. If you want, you can see it for yourself. Wait, wait. Okay, are you considering things like locking your windows, monitoring your air ducts, and, I mean, you have one person downstairs. That's not going to stop Share the Truth from getting up here. You haven't seen what they're capable of. Noted. But you saw we also have a metal detector in the lobby, too, right? Yeah, of course. We noticed that because we came up through the lobby elevator. Right. So we should go take a look at that storage facility. I can take you there. I'll give you a full tour. Oh, but feel free to check out the jacuzzis before we go.
We took a very extensive tour of the storage facility. It took a while. So much so that we aren't going to bore you with descriptions of some warehouse and the technical specs thereof. Long story short, everything appeared to be in place. No signs of share the truth. No breaches, physically or otherwise. No attacks. Could it become a target? Could even talking about it in this episode bring it a notch higher on Share the Truth's hit list? Maybe. But at least the sharing of Chicago is on alert. After the tour, Stevie and I went back to our hotel room. I suppose you'll say it's my fault for wasting our time flying out here. No, I'm not blaming you. I brought it up in the first place. We just followed the lead. So, did Share the Truth really even pass through here? Those videos we requested will tell us, but we have to wait for them. Another thing we have to wait for. We've just been biding our time. Now we're wasting our time. Damn it. We might have been, Robin. We might have been. But better safe than sorry. And you saw what equipment they have at their facility. They'll do just fine over here. One less thing to worry about. <sighs> How long were we at that facility? <sighs> what time is it even? <sighs> it's... Uh, whoa. Robin? Check your messages. Huh? They attacked again. The community health day? No. Breach of operation, da 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 da. That's... Animal attack at Midtown Bioservices. Downtown Santa Barbara. Midtown Bioservices? That's where they've been analyzing forensic evidence to try to track down share the truth. You know, like fingerprints. Wait, did they attack their computer system? The database? Was their data destroyed? It says they blew up the place, Robin, so I assume so. Oh. That confirms. Yeah. So, Share the Truth attacked a health center in Santa Barbara while we were away. Today. They sure did. And we're here. Of course. They're not in Chicago. We don't need to bother waiting for those CCTV videos. They're not going to show anything. They were never in Chicago. Oh, Stevie, you know what else I just realized? What? It makes sense that they destroy incriminating evidence against them, but isn't Midtown Bioservices also supplying the COVID boosters for the Sharing's Community Health Days? Oh, my God. You're right. So it's not just medical or forensic records they destroyed. Share the Truth is destroying vaccines and medical supplies and preventing the sharing from accessing them. This means Share the Truth are radical anti-vaxxers too. And they don't want our community to be healthy. This is, this is like bioterrorism, pharma terrorism. This is not good. We need to get back there right now and investigate. It's done. They destroyed the facility, they retreated, and I'm exhausted. How much more effective do you think we could be by getting back in the middle of the night on no sleep? We said we'd go back tonight. It won't even take us that long to get back. And I didn't know we'd be taking such a long-ass tour of a storage unit. Look, this is a lot. Let's just sleep on it. We'll get some decent rest and leave in the morning. We'll investigate the attack tomorrow when we get back. I'm going to bed. Fine. But we go first thing. Yeah. First thing. Good night. Good night. Hey, Stevie? Yeah? Can we trust our hotline anymore? Share the truth could have been calling in this time and trying to lead us out of town while they attacked again. Maybe we can track down those callers. Maybe that's the way to go forward. Robin, 
We've built great trust with our listeners, so we aren't going to say that we can't trust our hotline. But this is making us look like fools. I had a feeling something like this would happen. We'll be more discerning. There's plenty for us to look into when we get back. The attack, the clinic, whatever your lead is. But good night. Night. Very early that morning, I got a phone call. Yeah? It's Tom. I'm told you need to get over to that clinic. Oh, oh good. Um, we can get there by later this morning. So we'll meet you to pick up the equipment first, or will you meet us there? Or will we be meeting a team there for the setup? No, it's not about that. Stevie, we found them. You... you, what? Robin, wake up. Uh They found them. Huh? Tom, they're at the clinic? All confirmed as of this morning. Oh my god. So, the data... Get there now, before they catch on that we know. Tom, we have a problem. We're still in Chicago. What? Weren't you supposed to return to Santa Barbara yesterday? We got caught up following a lead. What were you... Never mind. We need you to be here today. It's going down here. Now. Get here. I have my own shit to take care of this morning. Let's just say it looks like we're in the same boat. They're not going to be very happy with us. What we missed? You know, the security loopholes. I'll request backup, but you should be the ones to get the clinic if you don't want to suffer negative consequences. Look, I have to get a head start on something. So just make it happen. They can't get away. We got to the clinic quick, just slightly later that day. We were lucky to catch such a convenient flight. Walter? Michelle? Cassie? (gasps) They're gone. Tapson! The animals, the cages, they're all gone. The greens. If they're hiding in here, we're not going to find them. We weren't here. We weren't here in time. They got away. We're too late. That concludes Sporadic Phantoms, Episode 16, The Flight. Tune in next month for Episode 17. In our next episode, we have a lot to report to you. And we're about to initiate a whole new phase of the investigation. It may look like everything's been slipping away from our grasp, but it's all coming together now. Special thanks to... K.A. Applegate, Julie Becker, Jesse Honard, Lisa Lang, Walter Mack, and Abby Savoy. And shout out to our newest Patreon subscribers, Stephanie and Mobile Suit Bagheera. Thanks to you, we can start to reimburse ourselves for the hotel room service. If you'd like to support our investigation, visit our Patreon or our Ko-fi page, or check out our merch on Redbubble. If you are absolutely serious about having spotted Kyle, or any other missing person, or seriously suspicious animal activity around Santa Barbara, leave a message for the Sporadic Phantoms Missing Persons Hotline at 805-364-2251. Or email us at sporadicphantoms at gmail.com. If you'd like to engage with us and other listeners, you can tweet at us or join our Discord server. All these links and any recent updates to the Sporadic Phantoms dossier can be found on our website, sporadicphantoms.com. Listen, this is not a game. This is not a joke. This is real life. And we don't appreciate being toyed with, if that is what happened with this whole Chicago business. But, oh, do we have news for you next time. 
because now we know who they are. We'll see who has the last laugh when we apprehend Share the Truth, because it's happening soon. For all you listeners who have been doing their best to support us, now with Share the Truth's identities known, you'll be able to help us find them a lot easier. Yeah, even you.